uh, this morning I'm going to take you on a tour of my shop. Uh, I've been meaning to do a video tour for some time, but there was always this shop improvement on the horizon that I thought once I get that shop improvement in place, that's the time for the uh, video tour. Well, I soon realized, not soon, over a period of time I realized there's always a shop improvement on the horizon as there is now. Anyway, a little background on the um, shop here. Uh, this is a property we bought in 2007. Uh, there was an existing shop in place. Um, it uh, was about 1,500 square feet. I wanted more, I needed more. Uh, so we had a builder come out. He inspected the building and said, sure, we can add on and we can take out these walls and make a, you know, this big open space. Um, so we bought the property, went to get the building permit. The um, county said, mm -mm, can't take those walls out. So uh, it was a little bit of a freak out time for me because I'd spent a long time on my CAD program, drawing it up and putting little carts in there and running around and putting the saw here and, and the jointer there and all this to get good workflow. And that all went out the window. So uh, it's, it's, it is what it is. Uh, I'm still quite happy with my shop. It's not the ideal uh, workflow, but it's the best possible compromise. Now you will notice a very clean shop today. Uh, it normally doesn't look like this. If I'm in the midst of a project, uh, I can do one of two things. I can concentrate on the project or I can clean the shop, one but not the other. Uh, at the end of this week, I'm heading to uh, Tampa to do a, a class for a, week a, for a week. And so I always clean really good before I leave. I like returning to a nice clean shop. So let's get started. As you enter my shop, the first thing you will see embedded on the floor are these words, Regulae Stultisunt, rules are for fools. It's the rules of design I'm talking about. And um, I wrote a blog on this many years ago. I will post a still image of that blog so you can stop, pause, if you want to read it. If not, you can wait till my next book comes out because there's a um, version of it in there. This is February of 2023. The book should be out hopefully by June. So if you're a little patient, buy the book and see what it means. So this is the latest addition to the shop, the Felder K700S. Uh, love this saw. Uh, had it less than six months now. Um, I had a moment of panic uh, at, when it was about to be delivered. It came from Austria. I got notice that it was on the boat on its way here. And um, so I started going over the specs again and realized I had looked in the wrong column and this saw was bigger than I thought I had ordered, uh, which was a little bit of a um, freak out because I had barely enough room for the smaller saw. Um, but at least I, so I thought. I uh, was able to twist it this way and I've got, you can't see it from here. There's a little less than an inch before it hits the joiner planer. And I've got, oh, eight inches to this direction. So it fits. I'm glad I got it. It's a really, really neat saw. See, I've got the pneumatic hold downs for the slider. Uh, this opens up all kinds of possibilities. It changes the whole way I do things. As I often do, I like to have a home for every all the accessories for a machine, like I do here for the uh, slider. And, and I'm continually doing, like I said, shop improvements. This was one uh, a few years ago for the other saw that I had here uh, to open the blast gate. Not so over here, under the stairway, I have my tilting cart for sheet goods. Things come in off the pickup. 
cheap goods. I can load them on here. I can turn around and whoop, there we go. Pump it up till it's level with the slider. I'm in business. And this is my stuff comes off the saw, the off fall stuff falls in here. This rolls out. I have a motorized pallet jack, lifts it up, pickup comes in. This door slides up, goes into the pickup, off to the dump. My Felder AD941. This is a relatively uh, recent purchase, a little over a year ago. Love this machine. I still can't believe that I have this machine and the slider. I walk in the shop every morning and how fortunate am I to have these two great machines. This guy is another game changer. Uh, the ability to run the planer up within five thousandths of an inch and be right on the money. Uh, boy, that is so, so nice. My downdraft sanding area. Uh, this is just a cheap grizzly guy. Um, he's supposed to be 12 inches away from the wall when in use. So it's on wheels. I have lights that come on. You can see I've painted the uh, walls right here, this really bright white. So I get a lot of reflection. I want to, I want to see what's going on here. I've also got side light here, where I want to see raking light. Got my sander hooked up up here to a dust collection. Here I've got, here I've got uh, my sanding uh, discs in storage and old sanding pads on here so I can take these off and back on as many times as I want. Moving over here, you can see my um, lumber storage. This is my Gaboon ebony stash. This, 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 and uh, well, there's some scraps up there. Here on down, there's other mostly exotics uh, in scrap form. Uh, over here, uh, it's looking kind of bleak these days. I'm not in production anymore. I'm mostly retired. If you would have went back a few years, this would have been loaded up with uh, hardwoods here. Right down here though, uh, my Magasser ebony stash, blow it, my uh, Malaysian blackwood. Let's head on down here and I'll show you the rest. Vertical scraps here, let's head back to that wall over there. Down here we have more scrap storage. My radial arm where I cut things to rough length before they head over to the joiner. Up here is my uh, stash of veneers. Down here is just storage. When I don't know where to put something or it's finished product waiting to go out or just waiting to be sold, goes down here. I have a couple of these, what I call project carts. Um, they're not made for, you know, sitting at either end of a machine and, you know, when you feed it or offload it. I just, when I have a project going, I'll load up the jigs and the parts and put them on here. I have two of these. You'll see the other one in the um, other room. Here's Big Joe, my pallet, my motorized pallet jack. He comes out, he's what helps me uh, uh, empty those bins, my bins for, um, off fall, and he also goes back over to my, used to go back over to my lumber rack, and I would pick lumber up and come back like this and then sort it back in to its uh, rack. So, so before I, we go to the other part of the shop, let's head up the stairs there. It's not woodworking, but it's a part of the shop. It's my wife's studio. So Terry's not here today. She's on her way to Atlanta to a uh, to QuiltCon, big event in the quilting world. Um, but this 
It's what's called a long arm. Think of it as a kind of a CNC of the quilting world. It's quite the machine. Uh, whole quilts go on here. Let's head over there and I'll this just This is you. her uh, quilt wall. That's her current project that she has on the, uh, in progress. There's all her fabric and sewing machine. So Terry does a lot more than just quilts. You saw some of her uh, artwork and we, as we went up the stairs there. Uh, but primarily, uh, for the last few years, she's been focused mostly on quilts. So my CNC machine gets used in most every project I do these days. It's an integral part of what I do. I've really integrated it into my workflow. Uh, it's wedged in between, and you'll see in a minute why it's wedged, in between machine room one and machine room two. The slider in the back position gets a little too close right there. It's workable, but I'd like to have this space without the little computer kiosk right there. I'd like to have this move down a little bit. So come on in here and let me go over some of the um, uh, uh, details on my machine. So first off, you can see I have twin spindles. That's really nice because I can load up, you know, a different bit in each spindle and just keep the program going. Uh, well, uh, the reachable bed by both spindles is 35 and a half by 66 and a half. So that's not a full sheet, but it, it gives me most of what I need. Um, here you can see I have over travel, the gantry, this guy here, he oop, moves over the end there and I can clamp stuff to the end vertically and route from uh, the top, do joinery and such. Um, but I must say um, it was a good idea but I never really perfected it. It's faster for me to do joinery on the multi-router. Um, if I were still in business full-time, I'd probably uh, go back and rework this. I've seen other people on the web that have a much better over-travel system than I, what I've got here, so don't copy what I've got. So you can see I have this strip along here. This line here represents zero and X. I had the machine tell me where that was. I put this piece on here, a little oversized, the machine came back and cut zero X along that line. And you can see I have several, and it's held in. This is a, a, a removable piece. I have all these little pins that hold it in against the side. When this one gets worn out uh, or eaten up too many times by diving into it with a bit, I can just replace it with a new one. I also have all these little location holes along here, and I'll tell you what that's about in just a moment. Right here, this is zero and Y. The machine has done the same. It came in and cut that line, told me that's where it's at. So I can come in normally and shove stock right into that corner knowing that this is X zero, Y zero. And I just go from there really quick, really easy. When I have something longer than my 66 and a half inches that I want to do, this guy comes out and I can slide pieces down, but I need a reference. These pins here, they line up in these holes. And you can see these are mapped out, they're numbered. And so I know on my CAD program which number I need to put them in. And they go in like that. Right here, I draw, draw, I cut a corresponding hole on the first run where I want to line this up going down this way. So I have a positive reference along Y to move this guy down. I can reposition and then come back in and finish the length of the cut. So, and again, I have off ball scrap storage underneath this space here. And it does the same thing as the other bin. Comes out, my pallet, pallet jack uh, lifts it up. This door opens up. It shovels into the back of the pickup and off to the dump. So my saw stop is in this room up against the uh, CNC machine. In fact, 
when I said wedged, if I'm trying to rip a long piece, the CNC is in the way. Uh, for that reason, I'm actually thinking of selling this saw. Um, the only reason I kept it when I bought the slider uh, was I prefer ripping, but I had to move the uh, CNC down to accommodate this bigger slider than I thought I was getting, and now it's in the way of ripping. Uh, so what I uh, am saving the saw for is now harder to do, so I'm thinking about doing all my ripping on the slider and selling this guy, and then I would be able to move this guy down and take my multi-router and give it a permanent home here because I'd have all this space, and when we get over there, you'll see what I can do with the shaper. It'll have a permanent space too. So, but let's get into uh, what's going on here. You can see I have all the accessories for the uh, saw stop right here, and um, Let's come in here and I'll show you my sled um, setup. This is a sled system that I've developed. First version was back in the early 90s and it's kind of progressed over time. It's not as fancy as it could be if I were really thinking about keeping this saw. Well, no, even if I was thinking about keeping it, I wouldn't upgrade this because I do everything. I haven't used this sled in years now since I've had sliders over there. Um, if I didn't have the sliders, I would be thinking of upgrading it. But I've got a metal strip here, this little, and my stop has a little L bracket there. I can get close to my cut and tap in and out and I know exactly far how far in and out I'm going and I can get dial in the exact uh, number really quick. Down here, I'm, I have a shop made extension. Whoop, there we go. So against this wall, we have my spindle sander, multi-router, and a shaper down there. Uh, now, if I do sell the uh, saw stop, uh, I'm gonna take the multi-router, it goes where the saw stop was, and the shaper can come out of that storage area in the corner and be right here and have a permanent home. Uh, if you've seen my past videos, you know that I supercharged my multi-router. Um, there's videos on how I did both of these, use both of these uh, DROs, and my most recent videos were on these table extensions. So I'm not gonna go into um, uh, a lot of detail on those right now. You can go back and watch those previous videos on that. Here in the center of this machine room is my wide belt. Uh, it's relatively small wide belt as far as wide belts go and only a single um, drum, um, but 25 inches, I love it. Um, over here, is my edge sander and there's my belts and all that stuff. Moving around the room, we have my bandsaw. It's an 18 inch Laguna. Not a great saw, not a bad saw, somewhere in between it does the job. Uh, right here, this is interesting. This is my vacuum bag setup. Ah, right there. Right here, you probably can't see it, but right in there, that's aligned to my big vacuum. So I can hook up the big vacuum. This guy sucks down in under 10 seconds and I'm in business. Here's my uh, five horsepower um, dust collection. Uh, this is a bench left over from when I used to have classes in the bench room. Um, and I moved it in here in the machine room and my Shaper Origin occupies this space, has a permanent home right here. 
In the corner here, I have my Panta router. It pulls out when in use. I have these pins. They go in and lock it in the out position. And voila, I'm in business here. And up here I have the accessories and stuff. Moving into the uh, storage room. It's kind of tight quarters in here, but let's see if we can... And it usually borders on kind of a semi-mess. But it's somewhat organized. There's my bins. A lot of those are screws, nuts, bolts. And there's safety equipment up there. Uh, just any kind of supplies that are needed for the shop. Uh, finishing stuff. Oh yeah, and that's my finishing cabinet down there where all the finishing supplies go. And turning back here, if I can get out of the way. That's all screw storage there. If you've been following me for a while, you know I have a few routers. Um, you know, there's the old saying about not having too many clamps. Maybe the same applies for routers. Anyway, uh, my routers uh, station, three router tables. Come in a little closer and I'll go over everything individually. Close up. Over here I have my bit storage. Maybe the same applies for router bits too. No such thing as too many. Accessories. Oh, there's collets and all that stuff. Bearings. I even have some some bits I have um, already made the cut, noted what the, uh, the size is. You know, in a piece of scrap, I made it the cut so I can measure it again, so I can pick this up and know right away what size uh, it's gonna, and this is for like when I'm doing floating tenons and stuff where I really need to know right off uh, the size of the bit. So I have some of those pre-made up. Moving over here. Again, you can see I have all the accessories hanging on the wall all the way down to here. Uh, the dust collection, the hose, that's its storage space when it's not in use. It comes down, it can go on to this guy, this guy, or this guy. Let's zero in on this uh, uh, router table right here. This was a, a special one. This is my Powerlift Pro uh, made by MLCS. I have this digital control for up and down. I can say go up oh, 64th, go up 005. And I can, now that I've got that location, I can say save that location. There it is. And I can Put in the notes there, what, I, what did I want, um, whatever. There we go. So this is really neat being able to move it up and down and having all those presets. And router storage, here's my plunge routers. There's more routers. And accessories and stuff down there. This guy's Pee-wee. He's 100 years old and weighs 43 pounds. Still works, but I don't use him. I just like to look at him. So I've done a video on a tour of the bench room before, uh, but in the interest of continuity, I'm gonna add it on here as, as well. Um, this room is where I spend most of my time. And since I mostly retired, I made it a pleasant place to be. Uh, those cabinets over there, uh, they were open shelving. I covered them up. There's messes behind them. I just don't like looking at the messes, so it's all covered up. Uh, the floors, you can see, I've had those painted. I've made it a real pleasant place. I've got my uh, vintage audio set up throughout the room. Uh, let's start going through it. Down at this end, I have my two um, drill presses, one at this into the wall and the other one down there. Uh, right here, this is when I do uh, uh, photos. 
these roll down and I have a backdrop and the shop turns into a photo studio. Along this bench here, I have my uh, hollow chisel mortiser, one, my AR3A vintage speakers, small band saw, small band saw my um, buffer wheel, this sander, this is basically all where I do ebony pegs. I have two benches in this room, uh, both on wheels so I can move them around. That's when I do photos and stuff. Uh, pattern maker's vise on this one. And let's head down here. This is that other project cart. This is a uh, elliptical table, two of them that are in process. <clears throat> my primary bench with my Emmert uh, pattern maker's vise over here. My assembly table, it's on wheels too. Right here is all my clamps, my clamp wall. Uh, it may look like a lot of clamps to you, but in order to fit them all on this clamp wall, I had to get a rid of a lot of clamps. But this, I just narrowed it down to the bare essential. My sharpening station, my Tormac, All the accessories to the tarmac, which is a lot of more accessories down here. Back over at my bench again, main bench. I have my hand planes. Don't use them a lot, but I do use them from time to time. Hand saws and my secondary vice. This was the first vice I bought, a craftsman, back in the early 70s. A lot of storage in these drawers. There's. Whole drawer full of calipers. Tape measures, all my tape measures get calibrated. If they get a piece, they get painted green, that means they calibrated well and they're accurate. They go on this side, they get a red on them, they go on this side and they only get used for rough cutting or if someone wants to borrow one, they get a red one. Oh, that's uh, rasps and stuff. What's down there? Oh, just more miscellaneous um, box knives, pinch dogs, punches, etc. A lot of measuring stuff in here. This is where I sit and do a lot of my work on the computer and stuff. This used to be upstairs in my little cubby hole up there, but it was close quarters. So I brought it all down here in my retirement. I have my vintage audio gear, my AR-10 Pies, two screens, I'm all set. So that's been the full tour. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If there was something you saw along the tour that I have not done in a past uh, video that you would like me to expand on, let me know.